Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. While I'm busy waiting to buy wood for a bigger project, I decided to use some old stuff that has been lying around for quite a few years and make a small project out of it. In this case, a Bluetooth receiver class D amp with actually speakers that I bought. So the main idea here is, is to make a Bluetooth speaker housing box as well as compartments for the speakers themselves but everything integrated into one unit and not separately. As part of the project I'm also going to use leftover wood lying around as you saw in the previous picture and here I'm just marking up to cut it into different sizes. These are going to be the side bars or side pieces for the whole box The side of the box is going to be mahogany pieces, as you just saw, and the rest of the box is going to compromise of red oak, as you can see here, which I'm busy with recutting and resawing all the parts that I need. This is going to be one of the bottom or top part panels of the box and here I'm making a groove that will fit into the mahogany pieces as I will show later on. To get a consistent depth for all the pieces I'm using my router here to go down to the last bit to be consistent with each piece at the end of the day. Once that is done, I'm making grooves inside the panels themselves. These will house the side panels for the speaker compartments as well as the Bluetooth compartment. Once again, I'm using the router plane to get a consistent depth with all the pieces. As I mentioned before, the red oak pieces, the bottom and top part, are going to slide into the mahogany pieces. So to accommodate that, I'm also making grooves into the mahogany pieces, as shown as here. To remove the majority of waste I use a chisel and then as always I just use my router plane to get to the correct depth for all of the pieces. I'm not going to go all out on decoration on this project, I'm going to keep it sort of modern. So I'm just adding a chamfer on the front and back or on all sides of the side pieces. Also for this project I had like staining ink lying around also for quite a while so I decided to use it on the parts. So for the oak here I'm going to use the blue stain and see what it entails at the end of the day. For the mahogany side pieces, I'm also going to use a stain, but this one is more for a dark brown color to enhance the brown that's already there. Once the stains are dried, it's glue up time for the main pieces. So that's the side pieces, the two top and bottom parts, as well as the side pieces for the speaker compartment and Bluetooth compartment. And once that is done, it's time to glue in the holding parts on the front and the back as you can see here. To attach the speakers to the chamber box at the end of the day I'm using MDF pieces here as I'm showing right now with one of the speakers already connected. This is not going to be seen by the user so I don't care about how good it looks or how pretty it looks at the end of the day. I decided to solder on the wires just in case they would rattle loose due to operation. So yellow for positive and green for negative. To house the Bluetooth device itself in the box, I'm going to put it on a panel which will slide into these grooves and then attach it so it doesn't rattle around or move around. 
and it also will be easy once the project is done to insert it as well as to take it out for maintenance or for any modifications. And here is an example of what I mean. I'm busy gluing in the slide pieces and just showing here how it will work by sliding the Bluetooth device itself into the box. This is the back panel that will close the Bluetooth Forge Lash Class D amp. However, I still need to add a power source connector. In this case, I decided to keep it simple and just add a hole that I will push it through and then secure it with some glue. This is going to be the front panel that will close the front enclosure. It's also a mahogany piece and here I'm just showing how I will stain it so it will also look the same as the side panels after the stain. To help with some airflow, I'm drilling some holes on the underside of the box and then holes are also drilled on the back panel for the Bluetooth device. So it will give a natural airflow if any heat builds up inside the box due to the amp operation. Once the front panel has been glued in place, I decided to add some trim to make it a little bit more appealing. I've added side trims as you can see here and now I'm busy adding some, how can we say it, centered trims to break up the monotonous view of the unit. To help with gluing, I'm just adding some weights here so the glue can set. After all that is done, I'm now applying a layer of water-based polyurethane to keep everything clear as possible. If I use anything else oil-based, it might produce a yellow-amber color at the end of the day while it's drying, which could obviously discolor the whole blue effect and making it maybe green. To hide the speaker faces from the user, I'm going to add these little frames with cloth glued on both sides of it, also painted black, to make it a little bit more appealing. So here is a speaker connected to the box and here is one of the grill covers being put into place to hide the speaker itself. Now it's time to attach all the back panels. Here I'm attaching the back panel for one of the speaker boxes so that the sound doesn't escape all the way through and with the cables pulled all the way out. This little panel here that I'm attaching will keep the Bluetooth Class D amp in place so it won't slide out or rattle around when moving the box. The most difficult part here to attach the last back panel was just getting the wires out of the way. With the back panel in place, 
I'm just sorting out the wire so it's a little bit neater at the back and doesn't stick so far out. I made some grooves on the side panels just to accommodate this a little bit further. I'm adding some padded feet to the underside of the unit just to raise it above the floor to dampen it and to avoid vibrations. I must say at the end of the day I'm quite pleased with this project. It was not supposed to be hi-fi quality but testing it around my house I'm quite pleased with the sound quality that I'm getting from this unit as well as the loudness that it can reach. Inside the workshop here there's a little bit of echoing or reverb but I'm going to play a few samples for you However, obviously going through YouTube and going through a speaker on your side, it won't obviously give the same results that I've experienced in real life. But here is just to show that it works.